Hi, I'm Dan Linehan, and I'm a senior technical advisor at ATA Engineering. Today, we are going to start with part one of this two-part video series and talk a little about modal testing and its importance for validating the structural integrity of an aircraft. Then, in part two, we'll dive into modal testing excitation methods in detail and discuss the value of each type. Here at ATA, we are the leading independent modal testing and survey company in the U.S. And over the past two decades, we have pioneered and patented modal test and analysis methods to help our customers overcome complex design and engineering challenges to drive innovation in aviation. So first, let's talk about what exactly a modal test is and why they are so important to flight safety. A modal test, also known in the aircraft industry as a ground vibration test, or GBT, is used to obtain experimental vibration data that characterizes a structure's mass, stiffness, and damping properties. We also use modal testing to understand the structural response of aerospace platforms to harsh vibration environments, such as loads of a spacecraft during launch, and to design launch vehicle controllers that can safely maintain a rocket in flight. For an aircraft, the end results of a GBT are the measured natural frequencies, mode shapes, and damping ratios that are used to validate and improve computer-generated finite element models. Once the models are tuned with the GBT results, they can be used with high confidence to analytically and quickly predict safe flight conditions, including how high and how fast the aircraft can fly, while diligently avoiding flutter instabilities. Flutter is an extremely dangerous phenomenon where aerodynamic, structural, and inertial forces all couple together in a vicious, unstable cycle, amplifying themselves and potentially leading to catastrophic structural failure. Almost all aircraft have a critical airspeed beyond which they will encounter flutter. As you can see, flutter is a big deal when it comes to flight, and carrying out accurate GVTs is critical to the reliable aircraft performance that we've all come to expect. Here at ATA, we focus on how to obtain the most accurate data on the ground and how to quickly measure the modal response of an aircraft so we can ensure its long-term structural integrity while in the air. To that end, ATA has an in-house training device that we call the Ironbird, which we will use to demonstrate the GBT process. We can use a variety of methods, such as a modal impact hammer or an electronic shaker to gently apply input forces to a test article, such as an airplane or a satellite. To conduct the test, we measure and capture the force excitation inputs, as well as the output responses by placing many accelerometers, sometimes even hundreds, depending on the size of the test article, at discrete points on the test article. By quantifying the ratio between the output accelerations and the input forces, we can quantify the frequencies and generate, as you can see here, quite exaggerated shapes of the vibration modes of the test article. The quality and quantitative identification of the input forces are extremely important, and ATA has been at the forefront of developing advanced modal testing techniques for decades. Here are a few examples of successful GBTs that we've completed for our clients. So there you have it. I hope you've learned a little bit more about what goes into a GBT and the importance of these tests in helping aircraft operate safely. Join us for part two of this series, where we will talk about the history of GBT excitation methods, starting with the basic mode-by-mode -mode sign dwell, then modal impact hammer excitation, single input broadband random and sign sweep methods, multiple input random, and finally, ATA's patented multi-sign excitation method. Tune into our next video to find out more.